Hi, I'm Cynthia Ng. You are tuning in to another episode of Awani Review. On this episode, we will be taking a closer look at electric vehicles. Fueled by environmental concerns, governments around the world, including Malaysia, are writing public policies that favor electric vehicles and charging networks to speed up the uh, adoption towards low carbon vehicles. And joining me on the show today to talk more about this is Ali Reza Mertash, head of electrification at ABB Malaysia. ABB is a global leader in power, automation technologies and sustainable transport solutions. So great to have you here, Ali, to talk about this. Thanks. Very exciting developments coming out of uh, Malaysia. The government recently announced that a regulatory framework for EV charging infrastructure mm. uh, will be ready and enforced in the fourth quarter of this year. Uh, can we talk about that and how pertinent is this in uh, boosting EV uh, adoption rate? Because when we talk about adoption to electric mm. vehicle, access to reliable charging, uh, usually it, it is one of the main concerns among prospective EV buyers. Correct, yes, thanks. I think that's, that's one of the key questions. Um, allow me to give a brief introduction of our, especially our EV division, EV charging division, which uh, has become really number one globally. We are the leading company at this point of time. Um, I think many years back we have decided um, we need to be a key leader here, right? Uh, we saw the, the, um, the immobility from the cooking stage, so to say, moving, moving, creating the momentum and, and uh, starting the transition. So we decided really to, um, to engage a full division, 1,000 people, more than 350 engineers, day in, day out, really working and developing new, new technologies and innovation. Um, I think with this commitment, we have managed to have today, if you look into the portfolio, um, we, we easily have an end-to-end -end solution. We are having the small uh, AC chargers up to a fast charger, high power charger infrastructure. Um, I think um, we, with this infrastructure set up, with the products we are delivering, we can definitely contribute to the next stage of Malaysia's development. Now, um, what, what do we need? What is, what is needed in, as a next stage, um, especially um, here in Malaysia? And I think what happened lately is a fantastic move. Um, the, the, the public, the, the authorities, the government really put things together, um, experts working on that. So what we are going to see will be fantastic to see, to, uh, to take not only the, the product, the ABB product with high reliability and high quality, but also how to implement them uh, you know, on the road, on the station. So here I hope to see, and I'm, I'm sure we'll see, um, a very good and detailed specification. Um, we're gonna see detailed explanation, clarity. What do we need as player, as industry player, as contractor, as consultant, as operator? What do we need to fulfill to apply to a certain standard? And that's exactly the right, the right way to go. And I really appreciate uh, this step being taken by the government. Okay, so we are certainly looking forward to what's in the framework. Uh, but talk to us about um, what should be in there. You came from um, a very diverse background. Um, I mean, managing Europe and Europe, of course, is one of the countries um, that had uh, reached that tipping point of mass adoption of EV vehicles, where yes. uh, at least 5% of new vehicle sales are of electric. So talk to us about what's being done in those, area, uh, those countries and where are we right now, Malaysia? Mm. How do we get there? I think, um, I think comparing Europe to Malaysia is, is not a fair comparison at this point of time. Europe started much earlier to de mm -hmm. develop things. So wh what we have seen in Europe, especially, uh, you know, setting the, the ecosystem, setting the, 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 the basement to grow the business, uh, were mainly three things. Um, we need infrastructure for charging. Mm -hmm. No matter how great the cars are, no matter how cheap they are, no matter what, as long as there's anxiety on end user, on the consumer, what if I, I run out of battery? Where is the next charging station? So that was the number one. We need a lot high quality, reliable, fast chargers across the country. And that, is, that is really the first step which was taken by the European countries. The second, we need to make it attractive. Mm -hmm. The car needs to be attractive. 
it can be you know, a subsidy, it can be a tax, a tax credit, it can be any sort of support um, to tell to the end user, you don't worry about the cost. Today you want to buy a car, you decide traditional, but then you also can have the e-car at more or less the same cost, right? Last but not least is about making it easy for the consumer. So basically let's put the consumer to the centric, really at the centric and the center, and see what does he and she need. Making it simple for, for the consumer, make it safe, right? And that's what, what we need um, really to continue the momentum. It's not only about the product. Mm -hmm. It's not about the charger. They are safe, I guarantee you. ABB's charger definitely are super safe. How do we install them? Um, how do we bring them on the road? How many operators do we have operating them? You know, how, is the, you know, how do we pay? Is it by credit card? Is it by a, uh, you know, an app? Um, how do we make sure that the installation is done sufficient and safe? So all this has been implemented in Europe. Um, and I can tell you, right after this implementation has been done, of course it took you know, a couple of time, months, if not years, we have, been, we have been looking just the market skyrocketing. Mm -hmm. And I do expect this is going to happen in Malaysia because um, I see really the, the right steps being taken by public as well as the, as, the, as the private sector. Now on that note, the government did say they plan to set up about 10,000 charging stations uh, for EV in Malaysia by 2025. Mm -hmm. uh, at this point in time, earlier our discussion you mentioned there's about 4,000 yes. combination of AC and DC charging. Yes. Um, can we talk about uh, the viability of this target 10,000 and do you think that this is sufficient to jumpstart demand for EV adoption? Yeah, that's a good question. I think it's, it's a great start. It's a great start because it's not only a dream. There's a real goal being communicated and being, being um, set to, to achieve. I'll give you an example. Um, we have a global partnership with Shell. Um, we have been uh, implementing 12 of the fast chargers alongside north to south um, highway in Malaysia. 12 of them, six stations. Now, two weeks back, I was driving with two colleagues from KL to Penang, right? Mm -hmm. not, not, not the e-car, a conventional car. Midway, we decided let's have a break. Have a coffee, have a tea, and then we continue our way. So we did. It took us... Luckily, there was an ABB uh, fast charger, but it took us really end to end, entering, taking the coffee, taking the tea, then in the car, going back to highway, something around 20 to 20, uh, 25 minutes. Now, the question is, 10,000 units, is this enough? I'll tell you, maybe. It's not only about how many, but also which application and which speed of charging. We need a lot chargers, the small ones in the shopping mall, you know, even residential at home, mm -hmm. that's for sure. But what we need is definitely high charging power, fast chargers along the highway and along the, along the roads. All right. So that was your first point earlier. You had three points. I'm going to hit the second point, which okay. is affordability. Yes. Um, I mean, if you look at uh, total EV sales in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Now I'm quoting 2021 numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, only about 270 EV units were sold. Mm -hmm. In 2021, out of the total industry volume of new car sales vehicles, about half a million. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is before the government announced the, uh, they're getting rid of taxes mm -hmm. for EV, which was in the previous, <coughs> previous budget. Um, I know that adoption infra have to move hand in hand, you know, to support, it, support uh, each other. So I'm just wondering like, would tax exemptions and uh, what would that be enough again to you know get people to buy more EV vehicles? Mm. Because I mean, frankly, EV vehicles are still at a level where it's uh, not within the reach of the average Malaysian. Mm. Yeah, that's true. I think I gave you an example in Germany how that happened. Um, we were given um, I don't remember five or six thousand euros straight incentive, right? Okay. So you buy a car, you get five to six thousand. Now, my question back would be, um, if you buy a car in Europe, 50, 60 K euros, how much would this five to six thousand help you? How much would this convince you? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, we have 
we have to, to understand and we need to get support from the governments to bridge the time until we have the real cost parity. Tax exemption is one example, can be done. Um, we have seen examples where there wasn't any real subsidy. Certain states in US, there is no subsidy, no incentive, but the business is picking up. Mm. Um, so looking to Malaysia, I strongly believe we need to, to cover two things. One is um, it's important which brand. I don't, I don't think it makes sense only Porsche and BMW and Mercedes bring their cars or Volvo bring that. This is the, the, this is the tier one. Yep. But we want to go with the mass market, right? So looking to the mass market means affordability. Affordability, again, means incentive, tax, but also the right model with the right range and the right cost here in Malaysia. And I think this hand in hand with the given infrastructure, charging infrastructure, will make this business, this, this market booming very soon. Budget 2023 for Malaysia is coming up uh, in October. Uh, what sort of measures or incentives should uh, the government look into to encourage uh, two things on both sides, right? The consumer and also the automotive players. Yes, we need to go in parallel. We need to go hand in hand. Um, we need to focus, of course, on the automotive industry. We need to focus on them to help them come up with new brands, mm -hmm. sorry, with uh, existing brands and new models, right? Mm -hmm. Make it affordable. We need to look to the consumer. How much can we support you? Loan for free, no, no interest rate, um, tax ex exemption, any sort of other direct incentive programs. But let us not forget, whatever we do on this side, if we do not support the charging infrastructure, this won't pick up. So we won't see people buying cars. Okay, so let's the talk about that. From yeah. the charging uh, infrastructure perspective, what kind of incentives or measures should be taken to boost adoption, I mean we boost uh, rollout of the infrastructure? We see a lot of uh, new players coming in, right? Mm -hmm. um, they see there's something, there's a new market. There are construct construction companies, system integrator. There are a lot of uh, consulting companies. So I think uh, what we have been doing uh, this year, intensely educating them, mm -hmm. right? Telling them how to do, what is the ABB charger, what to do, how to install, where, what to do, what not to do. Um, I think if we had the great momentum which the government created just, just recently, if we had some support also for those new upcoming companies to get them, to incentivize them, to you know, build more those stations. If we had uh, the great companies you have already in, in Malaysia having a great coverage, if we had them entering the market, um, you know, you know, building up those charger infrastructure, charging infrastructures, that would help significantly to boost in the next two to three years. Mm, okay. Um, another uh, point of view, or rather hesitation, especially when yes. you mentioned anxiety uh, from a consumer perspective, yes. is um, maintenance uh, yes. of an electric vehicle. Yes. Um, but first, I do want to get to your point about cost parity. Yes. Um, uh, how soon will EV reach cost parity with the uh, internal combustion engine? models um, yes. at the rate we are going right now? Yes. What do you think? What do I think? Five years back, same question. I would have told you probably 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, really, I want to appreciate what this community has done the last 10 years. Seriously. If you look to the um, combustion industry, they had a century, more than 100 years yeah. to optimize. And then to optimize the optimization to be where they are today. Great cars, no doubt. And we had 10 years, a decade. If I remember back 10 years, uh, uh, 10 years back, um, more than 50% of a car, e-car, was the storage, right? Mm -hmm. So the costs are down by factor five of the storage. Um, I believe it will take, in China we are almost there. In China, 10, 15% below. I believe in other countries, in Malaysia, it will take us another two to five years to be there and to say, okay, now you decide not anymore 
con uh, con um, uh, 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 conventional versus E, but you're comparing E versus E, right? So give us another two to five years. Okay, now please. back to my earlier question. Yeah. Uh, maintenance costs, lack of assurance of at least similar maintenance costs against fuel cars. Yes. Um, are we closer to um, getting more clarity on for a consumer perspective? You know, yes. like if I'm going to buy an EV car, I'm not going to be charged an arm and leg for maintenance. Yes. I think um, let us let us let us give this society a bit of time. We have we s we saw that in Europe, um, it took time for all parties to understand. Okay, we need to prepare ourselves for this revolution. The insurance companies ah, we need to prepare ourselves. Even very simple workshop in Europe. W where do I go to repair my e-car? Yeah, you go to a workshop. They say I don't ha I don't have a clue. Sorry. So it will take time here in Malaysia. And we shall give the time. So what we do as ABB, um, we have our ABB Academy, and we really pull in all the different parties. They can reach out to us. We reach out to them and try to explain as much as possible what they need to do um, you know, to at least understand the charger. The automotive industry, I know, they are digging into this as well. Mm -hmm. So I think hand in hand, with the support of, 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 of the governments, the state and the central, we can really spread out and make it a really mass market. Mm. I really appreciate you answering me these questions. I know uh, some of these questions I'm asking is not related to charging, but it's, okay. um, Fair enough. Uh, it's something quite new for us. You know, we've heard about EV a couple of years back, but now we're really trying, to, we're feeling the momentum yes. and, and there's a lot of excitement. Um, another uh, question I do want to ask you is uh, you know, in incentivizing people to move to EV. Yeah. Um, for those previously debating the merits of EV, I think the rise in fuel prices uh, did accelerate EV adoption, I think we're seeing that US recently has yes. also just reached um, the uh, tipping point, the 5% tipping point. But Malaysia, where fuel is heavily uh, subsidized, do you see there is less impetus to migrate to e-cars because, because of our subsidy policies here? Yeah, there are, I think, not only in Malaysia, there are always several factors playing a role. Um, on the one side, you say the fuel prices. I can put on the other side uh, the electricity prices, right? Mm -hmm. um, I know there are experts on going and working on this topic here in Malaysia as well. Even if we had the same, is uh, same issue with the solar power many years back, right? We mm -hmm. said only solar power will pick up once the electricity from coal, nuclear, and so on yep. will, will rise. That didn't happen but the, the solar power picked up significantly. Why? Because um, if, if you start a momentum, that's a consumer uh, uh, product at the end, right? So if you start a momentum and people feel attracted by it, they won't sit at home, have a big file, Excel file, and go one by one and then calculate next five years, the oil <laughs> price and inflation, that's not gonna happen. It's a, it's a feel good product, right? Once we can achieve by communicating the right things, doing the right things in Malaysia, no matter how much oil and, and electricity will vary, I think we're going to kick off the, the business mm. here, here in Malaysia as well. I do want to point out there's this uh, survey by Ernst and Young, uh, actually quite recently, mm. they did a survey about potential EV barriers and more than half of them say that climate concerns is the top priority. Yeah. The second reason uh, that they gave, I mean, that, that stood out really highly was uh, rising penalties on internal combustion engines. Yes. Uh, do you see that as a uh, factor that something that the government could be looking at here in Malaysia? Also here, based on my own experience, we have seen different models in different countries. Um, yes, we have seen in Europe a strict ban. 2030, we have to switch, mm -hmm. no matter how. Did that help the industry? It put certain pressure on, on the player, yes. But we see also other countries without having this hard cut, where the business is picking up. So you ask me which one is the better, I, I won't be able to say. There are pros and cons. I believe Malaysia at this point of time is creating the right momentum mm -hmm. at the right time. Let us continue with this momentum and really push all ends to get the right messages and the right products into the market. 
So do you think Malaysia should follow in the footsteps uh, the likes of Singapore, um, you know, China, Japan, Thailand to phase out fossil fuel vehicles at a certain time frame? Honestly, that's not on me or on IBB to advise your, your government. Um, I strongly believe that's one of the options, mm -hmm. but that's not the only option to make it successful. Mm -hmm. See, if I look back this year, one of my friends, he's a, he's a, he's a local uh, gentleman, he bought a hybrid car. He could have exactly the same car as a traditional one. I asked him, why you did you buy this one? He said, there's an attractive incentive to buy the hybrid car. I said, good, okay. So he was clear why he bought the hybrid car. Then I asked him, why didn't you buy the fully electrical car? And his answer was two reasons. He came straight to the point. He said, reason number one, too expensive. Reason number two, I don't want to stuck anywhere because there is no charger. Simple. Now, we can debate should we put a hard uh, change or not. As long as we don't understand the anxiety, the concerns of the end user and of the customer, we never, no matter with or without, we're not going to get this up and running uh, in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, just a couple of final questions. Uh, we're running out of time here. So Malaysia uh, is pushing ahead, mm -hmm. uh, encouraging EV investment. Um, Indonesia as well. Mm. Um, I think we've heard about how Indonesia has been very forthcoming to invite mm. EV makers, Tesla and all that. Um, from a manufacturing perspective, Indonesia obviously presents a much more appealing case mm. because they have the natural resources, the nickel, uh, but Malaysia has that ambition. Mm. So uh, what are your thoughts on that, on making Malaysia to be an EV investment hub, as you mentioned earlier mm. in the show? I'm very optimistic, to be frank with you. Um, why? Um, I'm just, I was in Penang, I told you, just, just um, that's, that's an amazing state, a lot, a lot of semicon. They just go and invest, right? Yeah. Um, I think two major reasons, um, also looking to, to ABB. Really, I think having a certain, so make it attractive for the industry, certain incentives, always you know, attract industry to come and invest in, in the country. Um, but also the local market. If you as an industry, you see the ma local market, you have the hope or the expectation the local market is going to pick up. And you have the attractive incentive plan from the government, from the central or state, why wouldn't you come and invest? I think um, Malaysia has been doing a fantastic job uh, in, the, in the recent years, attracting industries to come to, to, to Malaysia and to, to invest. I, I, I don't see any big hurdle to have the same mm -hmm. For, for the EV. What else do you think is needed to accelerate that investment appetite for EV, particularly in Malaysia? I think we need really to, um, to show we are serious about EV. We need to show we are investing into uh, charging, we are investing into automotive. So we want this hub, this country become a hub, mm -hmm. local as well as regional. Um, and I think certain discussions, which I'm sure are, are ongoing, uh, to make it attractive to, to you know, tax credits. I'm, I'm not an expert. Your government will know much better than I do. Um, what, what attracts the industry to come and to invest? But for sure, we need to show, first, we are serious about this technology for the local market, and for sure, as a second step, to be a hub for local as well as, uh, as the region. Okay. Going back to my first point earlier about yes. the regulatory uh, framework yeah. uh, for in the fourth quarter, what do you hope to see out of it? Long wish list. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think what I, what I heard, we are going to the right direction, to be honest. So um, we need clarity mm -hmm. on which, product are, which products are allowed to be imported, right? Okay. We have seen negative cases in other countries. Um, it must be high quality products, safe products coming to Malaysia, number one. Number two, how to implement, install, assemble, test and so on, right? I think there is a lot of uncertainty in the market. How should we implement it? We had the same topic with our, with our uh, you know, partners for those high charger installations. So um, we could help them, we could educate them, but I think this is a sort of guideline which I hope we're going to see and I'm sure we'll see a fantastic one coming, on, uh, coming up soon. 
Well, thank you so much, Ali. And hopefully in just a couple of years time, we can drive our EVs to a uh, petrol station, 15, 20 minutes later after a cup of coffee, and then you're good to go. And Absolutely. hopefully we reach that stage soon. Well, thank you so much, uh, Ali, for thank spending you. time with me to talk about EV in Malaysia. Sure, thanks. Thank you.